Hi, and welcome to this introduction to Benshaw Moor, Northumberland Wildlife Trust's newest and second largest nature reserve. Benshaw Moor is situated to the south of the Reedsdale Valley, sitting just outside of Elsdon and the Northumberland National Park boundary, between the A696 and the Winters Gibbet Road. Now, here's Trey Anfield to give you an insight into how she created an amazing film to promote Benshaw Moor. Hello there, I'm Trey, and uh, as well as being a trustee of Northumberland Wildlife Trust, I'm also a photographer and a filmmaker. And as soon as I heard about Benshaw Moor, I knew that I wanted to document it in some way. And that's for a couple of reasons, really. The first being, quite simply, that Benshaw is just such a wonderful site. Um, it's also one that might be quite underestimated. Uh, it'd certainly be easy to dismiss it on a, an overcast, a windy day, as a little bit bleak and exposed up there on the moors. But it's closer inspection that really, really uh, gives you the value of Benshaw. It's full of a mosaic of little gems of habitats, and uh, it really is quite a treasure trove of those. I don't want to steal Duncan and Alice's thunder by telling you too much about them in detail at the moment. I'll leave that to them in the film. But suffice to say, it is an amazing site that's not only great for nature, but as you'll see in the film, it's also great for our climate as well. I certainly had an amazing time uh, when I was filming up at Benshaw. Uh, one of the highlights was waking up in the morning and a fox uh, hunting around my car, doing that lovely pouncing uh, thing into the grass after, I think it's after a little rodent. And also seeing the, uh, the common lizards lounging in the sun and plants like grass of Parnassus are just absolutely elegant and beautiful. So I had an, an amazing time up there during the filming. And the second reason I wanted to make a film about Benshaw is because of how the trust has come to have this land. It's an amazing story, an inspiring one as well. And it's, it's thanks to you, thanks to our individual donors, thanks to local businesses, to charitable trusts, and of course, our members as well. Everybody that contributed to getting us this land. So when somebody does something amazing for you, you want to say thank you. And this film is a small token of our huge thanks at Northumberland Wildlife Trust for all that all of you have done uh, helping us get this land. So I hope you enjoy the film and of course your visit when you do get up to Benshaw if you haven't been already. I'll leave you now with Duncan and Alice to uh, give you a little taste and an explore around the site. So this is Benshaw Moor, Northumberland Wildlife Trust's second largest nature reserve at 600 acres. It's a, a big area of heather moorland, peat bogs and other little habitats as well in amongst it. Really interesting site for its botany and its other wildlife that we see up, up on site here. So we have lots of heather moorland on site and this habitat is brilliant for reptiles like common lizards and adders, but it's also brilliant habitat for ground nesting birds including curlew and skylark. So we are on one of our peat bog habitats where you can find sphagnum mosses, cranberry, sundew. Peat bogs are really important in the fight against climate change because they help to store carbon and here on Benshaw we have 4.5 metres of peat which is equal to four and a half thousand years worth of peat formation. This is a tufa spring which has raised itself up over centuries and where the water seeps out it creates really great habitat for a number of unusual plant species which include broadleaf cotton grass and grass of Parnassus. So 
here we have limestone grassland and this stream which supports a number of invertebrates, mammals and birds such as otter and grey wagtail. We're doing a load of survey work at the moment on site to find out a little bit more about what we've got here. That will help guide us as to what we do in the future in terms of management. And we're going to see, I think, a few changes as we go through the next few years and, and see how we get on. Different grazing patterns, all sorts of things might change on here. And I think just finally, we'd like to say thank you very much to everyone, uh, supporters and members who actually helped us buy this wonderful site in the first place. Thank you to Trey for that fantastic introduction to the site. Over to Alice and Duncan to shine a light on Benshaw's very interesting past. The evening of the 10th of May 1941 would have been like any other for the radar station Chain Home on Otter Cops, just outside the boundary of Benshaw Moor. Their job night after night was to detect enemy aircraft as they approached these shores. That evening a single Messerschmitt circled off the coast of Northumberland waiting for darkness to fall. At 22.08, the chain home radar station picked up the first signal of this lone plane and Raid 42 had begun. The plane dropped in altitude and continued northwest, heading for Dungavel House in South Lanarkshire. At 23.09, the plane crashed, but not before its occupant, Rudolf Hess, the notorious Nazi and deputy to Hitler, managed to parachute out. His individual mission was to open peace negotiations with Britain. Hess killed himself in Spandau Prison in Berlin in 1987. Today we still have relics of that time here on Bench on Moor. A Type 22 pillbox with the luxury of added porch sits atop Bench on Law with wide vistas out to the north and the west. Tucked down below it is a magazine or explosive store, featureless inside and largely hidden underground. The radar station was defended by four light anti-aircraft sites, and Middle Hill in the centre of Benshaw Moor seems to have been the location for one of these, though no trace of it remains. Other historical features on site relate to its agricultural past, such as this sheep cell that we're in now and its boundary walls. Around the site we have locations of old coal mines and a long lost well. We think Benshaw is a beautiful place to visit, but don't just take our word for it. Here's Mel, one of our fantastic volunteers at Northumberland Wildlife Trust, to tell you about his experiences at the reserve. OK, here we are at Benshaw Moor, which I think is a great acquisition for Northumberland Wildlife Trust. When, when one drives past it at first and looks from the road, it just looks like bit what my uh, Cumbrian farming uh, relatives would call a bit of a reshy old field uh, with nothing very interesting in it but once you get down here actually it's uh, a real mosaic of different habitats which are really interesting. It's uh, I think when the staff at the Trust did a great job in acquiring it when it became available uh, a because they're protecting it and it's a fantastic area it's a great facility as well uh, and it just gives us a, a, rea a good chance to, to increase biodiversity here. I don't know if anybody else has explored this as well, but it's only a short trek across uh, Steng Moss down to our site at Milburn. So it's actually quite possible to do a, a really interesting walk, which includes both sites, which I've done once, rather. No footpaths people need to be warned about, of course. It's quite rough walking, but really good. Anron route, all sorts of interesting things to see. Great range of... Uh, plants, uh, flowers that you might see come across, a uh, really nice patch of uh, broad-leaved cotton grass that I came across in the summer, which is fabulous, 
uh, some bog situate which I'd not seen before. So really interesting range of, of things to see. And then mammals, potentially lots of different things here. I came across a, a pair of merlins last time I was walking. One just flew up from the ground as I walked along. A short eeled owl flying overhead. There's just no end of things and lots of stuff across we don't yet know about I suppose. And we'll find as we go on, uh, season by season. So, and this place really does have seasons of course. As we've seen today, snow, the sun shining. We've been up before with this waterfall being a torrent. Now it's a trickle. Uh, so just just a great sight really. So, and it's going to be, I think, for years to come, a really interesting place for volunteers to come and work and for staff to come and survey. Uh, yeah, a great site. Since we bought Bench or Moat, we've been trying to find out a little bit more about what we've got here. So we've had a few, quite a number of experts out to have a look at what they can find on site. And uh, um, we've also done a lot of other surveys as well, just to see what species are here, uh, what comes up after things have changed. We, when we took it on, we, we removed the grazing that was already happening here on, on site here. And we've been able to find out a little bit about what's been growing uh, as a result of that. So all of this gives us a, a bit of a picture about what we're going to have here uh, and what lives here and that can help guide us into what we're going to do in the future. One of the other big problems we've got is that the fences are all completely broken. Uh, none of them are, are sheep tight uh, and therefore we're going to need to replace all of those before we can even consider getting any grazing back on the on the bench or moor here. Uh, and so it gives a little bit of time I suppose to, to think a little bit carefully about what we're doing. There's no hurry. A site like this doesn't change very quickly so we've got enough time to think about everything, take it slowly and to sort of slowly reintroduce things as we feel most appropriate. So the next thing to do as I say is to get the fencing done, perhaps introduce small amounts of grazing, perhaps with bigger animals, you know cattle or ponies, extra ponies for example, that might provide a little bit of different grazing uh, and see, continue to see what's happening and see what's uh, living on site and see what's thriving here. Uh, that will then help us to guide the next steps, uh, which may be to do with a little bit of tree planting in appropriate places, or maybe just allowing it to regenerate in its own way. Um, but we've obviously got to try and be careful that we've the important habitats, the, the peatland, bog, the peat bogs on site, the springs, the flushes, all of those areas that are quite sensitive. We have to make sure that they are really protected in whatever we're doing, um, as well as trying to find out what else is here to make sure that, that is too. So one of the areas that we found that changed significantly once we removed the grazing was this area that we're in at the moment. And since removing the grazing, we've seen wildflowers you might not expect in an upland, such as devil's bit scabious, meadow cranes bill, and betony. And along with those wildflowers, we found an incredible diversity of butterflies on site, including ringlet, large heath, small pearl bordered fritillaries and a whole host of other butterflies as well. So it's been really lovely to see the changes in the site since we've purchased it.
Past land management practices on site are obvious when you look at Benshaw from above. Straight lines across the landscape highlight ditches which were dug to drain the wet heath and blanket bog to make the land easier to keep livestock. These drainage ditches, or grips, drastically change the plant species on site. They also increase the risk of soil erosion and flash flooding downstream. The worst of these drains have already been blocked at Benshaw, but more work is needed here to maintain these quality habitats. Throughout autumn 2020, we managed to capture footage of a great range of species along the stream here at Benshaw. The waterfall is a particularly lovely place to catch certain species on camera, including otter. During filming, we were also lucky enough to see a group of roe deer who are regulars on the trail cameras. One of the main reasons for buying Bench or Moor was to do with its botanical interest. Uh, and when we first came down onto the site, we looked at this particular location, uh, the Tufa Spring, with its uh, base rich, uh, important limestone species that are living here, uh, and realised how actually import how important it was. Uh, and the reason we were so interested in a botanically interesting site was the fact that we'd been given a legacy a few years earlier by Professor George Swan um, to enable us to buy a site of botanical interest. And this fulfilled that function incredibly well. So obviously an enormous thank you to him uh, and to his family uh, because without that money I don't think we would have even been in a position to even have thought about starting to look at the purchase of here. The Tufa Spring here at Benshaw has formed a mound over time as base rich water caused by limestone underground runs off and into the main stream here. This creates a niche habitat for species such as the beautiful grass of Panassus seen here at Benshaw and a whole host of other base rich specialists. This is just one of the microhabitats on site as Benshaw Moor hosts a variety of different species, forming a mosaic across its 600 acres. Thank you to all our members and donors for allowing us to buy this wonderful site. And thank you to Branch Out and Eric Northeast for funding the wildlife recording efforts on site. Special thanks to Trey Anfield for making the fantastic film showcased during this event. It's with this support that the Trust can carry on protecting beautiful sites like this one into the future. 
Don't forget to look out for events coming later in the year at Benshaw Moor, including guided walks across the reserve and a bio blitz. For now though, the team are on hand to answer any questions you have about the site, so please post these in the comments section. We look forward to hearing from you.